Open to the book of James chapter 4 verse 7. Book of James chapter 4 verse 7. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Father, we thank you because your word is true and your will for us is to be humble, to remain humble because you oppose the proud. Therefore, this morning, speak to us. Open our hearts to receive this word. Open our ears to hear this word. Help us to be humble. Help us to resist, to, to, to stay away from pride. Give us the grace that we will not fall into the sin of pride, that you may not resist us. Use this word to bless your people. Use this word to strengthen our faith and our walk with you. Glorify your name through this word. I pray that I may decrease, that you might increase. Let your will be done in our lives. We receive the spirit of humility even as this word goes forth. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. amen. I want to speak this morning on the sin of pride. The sin of pride. Do you know that that was one of the key reasons why the devil was kicked out of heaven? The moment God sees pride in anyone, no matter who they are, God begins to resist you. You will never have favor with God. You will never, God will not answer your prayers. You will be far away from God and God himself will fight you. God himself will resist you. This is not the devil resisting you. God himself opposes you, resists you, fights you. Why? Because of pride. You know that the devil became pride in heaven. The devil was a worship leader in heaven. All the angels and all the creations in heaven and all the trees, flowers, animals, everything in heaven worship God. But you know, when you are the, the being that was created with the primary job description to lead the worship and to sing and to praise God, he saw God's face. He was in close proximity with God. And all the cherubims and all the angels, archangels, everything. And when you talk about worship in heaven, you have we have no idea what it is. You are talking of the God of create the creation of the creator of heaven and earth. You are talking of a being who is greater than the universe, as great and as fast as the universe is. This great God is greater than the universe. He created the universe. He popped all the universe out of his being. And then he is the one that sits and has everything worshipping. Do you know that even the sun, the moon, from time to time, they come by this throne room and they bow and worship. Amen. Amen. So the devil organized and led the whole worship in heaven. At some point, pride entered him. And he was like, wait a minute. Why should I be the one worshipping God, leading people? I need me some worship too. I want me some worship. I can have people, I want to have angels worship me, people worship me. When there were no people then, God hadn't created um, humans, so it was only the beings in heaven. So he wanted some of that worship. He wanted to become like God, and he said in his heart, that was when pride set him. He said in his eyes, I will arise to the throne, I mean to the, to the mountains of God. He wanted to overthrow God, so to speak. He wanted to plant a coup in heaven, and that was what happened. But he began to think it. He said, I want to overthrow God. I want to become God. I want to have everyone worship me. I want even God to be under me. Remember, he was created. God is not created. God is a being. He's the only being that was not created. The devil and every, then he was Lucifer. He was a created being. So how can a created being want to overtake his creator? How can somebody who was created want the one who created him to become, to come under him? And then he began to talk to some angels. He began to mobilize. Hey, you know what? I'm planning to overthrow God. Can you just come join my camp? When we push him out, we'll become, I'll make you the minister of defense. I'll make you minister of information, you know? You will become like, we'll, we'll become like God. We'll, have a, we'll control everything you see in heaven. And out of that pride, the pride went to his head. And he began to think it, and he began to plan it to execute. But God saw that he pride has entered him and God kicked him out of heaven. Angel, uh, the archangel Michael led the, the, uh, the angels that are designated to fight the warrior angels and they fought and kicked him out of heaven and that was how he lost his place in heaven. From that time God he detests anything proud anything proud because that was how the devil brought trouble 
trouble in heaven. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. Can you imagine heaven that is a holy place, a peaceful place, a place where everything is perfect? Can you imagine war? So when we talk about the Iran war, the Afghanistan war, the Korean war, all the wars we've seen here, down here, it didn't start here, it started in heaven. God had to fight a war in heaven. And the archangels led, and God gave them power. And they had more power than the, other, the devil because God is all powerful. And the devil was kicked out. So whenever proud is seen anywhere, you remind God of the heartbreak he went through in the hand of the enemy. Pride kind of, kind of reminds God of what the devil did to him. Because it was pride that led to the devil trying to overthrow God, trying to fight God, trying to become like God. So that's why the Bible says that God resists the proud. So I want to show us four things about the sin of pride. Number one, pride brings the final position. Like what I've, what the scripture we read. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Now, before we talk about the humble, let's talk more about the proud. The moment pride is seen in somebody, remember it's a sin, and actually one of the greatest sins. The moment pride is seen in somebody, God becomes your opposer. Not the devil, not demons. God himself opposes the proud. So pride brings divine opposition. But then he gives grace to the humble. If you look at the story about the two men that went to pray, Jesus himself narrated this story. And the Bible says that the first one was filled with pride. He goes up to the altar and he says, hey, God, you know, I'm sure maybe he called him by some, some fun name. He said, God, <laughs> I know I don't need introduction. You know me already, you know. I come every day, every day. I fast every day. I, I fast maybe three times a week. I give my tithe. I do this. He was just ruling out his qualification, so to speak. But the Bible says our righteousness, I was filthy right before God. You could see pride even in the way he was talking to God in that prayer. And he said to God, don't even mind that other public and that sinner over there. I'm not like other men. I'm not like him. He's elevating himself. He is making himself more important. He is making himself who he is not in the sight of God. That is pride. Pride makes you feel more important than every other person. Pride makes you think that you are the only one that has it all. And that is why even among ministers, anytime I see a minister is always attacking and correcting everybody, he's always right. That's the, that's, he already has a problem. Pride. Anytime you think that you are the only one, it's only you that knows the truth of the revelation of God's word. Every other person is preaching error. You are, and some ministers have taken it upon themselves their own message is to correct, 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 correcting everybody. Forgetting about the fact that they are already in error. When pride sets in, people don't often see that who they are, who they think they are is not how God sees them. This guy thought he was a perfect man, but God saw him as a sinner and a prideful man. And he said to God, don't even mind the man. I'm not like the sinners of that one over there. And then Jesus says, the other one, he couldn't even come to the other. He was right where there. He was, he was in the back. And he couldn't lift his head. His head was bowed. And he beat his chest. Say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus says that man went home justified. Justified means that God declares you holy, innocent, righteous. It's as if your sins never existed. He forgives your sins. He takes them away from you. And he declares you righteous and just as if you never committed a sin. So that means that this man who was a sinner, who this proud man was saying, God, don't mind him. I'm not like him. He's a sinner. He was the one that God had mercy on, that God forgave and God justified him. He went on like a, as a holy man, as a justified man because God justified him. God forgave him and counted him righteous. Why? Because he was humble. When we come to God, we need to understand that we can only reach God, approach God, and God can only hear our prayers when we come to him in humility. When you call, forget about what you are or who you are or what you have done. Come with humility. Come repenting of your sins. Come asking for his mercy. Asking for his forgiveness. And come with a broken heart and a 
a contrary spirit. The Bible says a broken heart and a contrary spirit. God will not despise. When you come to God and you are broken in your heart and you are contrite in your spirit and you cry out to him from your heart, God will hear your cry. God will forgive your sins because he loves humility. He reaches out to the humble. He cannot ignore the contrite heart. He cannot ignore the humble. This man was humble before God and he says, Lord, be merciful to me a sinner. He called himself a sinner. He, that is who he is. That is who we all are. For we all have a share of sheep have wandered away because we are sinners. But it's only God that saved us by his grace. Therefore, when we come before God, you need to see that God has seen you as somebody who has fallen short of his glory. You need to identify yourself with who you are. That is a sinner. Someone who has fallen short of his glory except for the mercy of God. And then you need to receive the mercy of God through the blood of Jesus. You receive forgiveness by his mercy. You make peace with God through Jesus. And the cross and the blood he shed on the cross of Calvary. That is the way God forgives you. That is the way God graces you and brings you into his fold as his child. You walk in humility. You don't come to God bragging about who you are. You don't come to God bragging about what you have done. It doesn't matter what you have done. Outside of his mercy, whatever you have done is nothing. For all our righteousness are as filthy right before him. It's only by his mercy that we can approach him. Therefore, when you come before him, come in humility. When you come in proud, God himself resists you. God himself pushes you, push you away. God himself fights you. Mind you, it's not the devil fighting you. It's not the devil resisting you. It's God himself. And how terrible could it be to have the God of heaven and earth fighting you, resisting you. So the, the root of your problem is a prideful person. The root of your problem is not the devil. The root of your problem is not demons. It's God himself fighting you, resisting you, blocking your way, hindering you. Why? Because of pride. Lift your hand and say, Father, Oh, sing like you mean it, Father. Forgive me for every sin of pride. Forgive me for the times I've been proud. I receive the spirit of humility. Help me to be humble. In Jesus' name. That's why I love the song that they used to play, one of the musical love by Maranatha Singers. It says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift before God, you are setting yourself up for the lifting of God. And I've come to prophesy to some humble persons under the sound of my voice, the lifting end of God is coming upon you. I prophesy to you, as you come before God in humility, as you humble yourself before God, God is going to lift you. God is going to promote you. God is going to set you up for lifting and promotion. The way up with God is down. If you want to be promoted, if you want to go up, if you want to be lifted in life, the secret is humility. The secret is going down, going low, being down. God coming before God with humility. Humble yourself. Humble your heart when you come before God. In your work with God. In your service with God. Whatever you think you are doing for God. Humble yourself and remain humble. And one of the things I've also learned is this. The more God lifts you, the more God blesses you, the more God promotes you, the more humble you should be. Amen. Amen. 
Because that's when the devil will want to come and begin to make things great to your head and say, hey, now, wow, congrats. You know, you are now a bishop. You know, you are now a colonel. You know, you are now a bishop. Now you can act big, you know? Now you can like act like you are God's age mate. But listen, the more God blesses you, the more God lifts you, I've come to discover if you want to last long with God, if you want God to bless you the more, if you want God to lift you the more, that's when you need need to be humble the more. I'm telling you there are people that when we talk, I just say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the more I go up, the more I just say to them, oh sir, yes sir. Now, sometimes it feels embarrassing to them. I mean, why are you calling me sir? And I also know have some friends who also I kind of think, I will say to them sir. So, there are some ministers, there are some pastor friends, we compete against each other as to who says more sir. I'm telling you, I have a bishop friend every time. You know, he says, yes, sir. I'm going to say, sir. I'm kind of like, no, I should be signing you. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. So it's like we are seeing, we are trying to see who will answer each other. It, that's a way of trying to stay humble. You are not trying to make yourself bigger or more important than them, but you are trying to be humble that even when you address them, you are using the most polite language, expression in the English language, at least in the use of courtesy, sir. But when you think that, yeah, I've arrived, I've made it, you know what? I have a bigger car than yours, I have a bigger ministry than yours, I have bigger, more members than yours, therefore I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the happening guy. And you now begin to look down on others. Guess what? That is when God begins to fight you. That is when God begins to oppose you. God opposes the proud. If you want to stay up, if you want to go up and stay up, if you want God to bless you and to remain blessed, if you don't want to, God to be the one fighting you, the God doesn't need to use the devil or recruit the devil. No. Now, God will be the one to fight you, to resist you, to oppose you. If you don't want God to fight you, come on, stay humble. Stay humble. And sometimes you need to look yourself in the mirror and assess yourself and have a self-reflection and wonder and check to see if you are still humble and that starts from the heart you need to be humble in your heart when you approach God when you talk to people when you relate with people stay humble because that is the way to go up and to remain up the sin of pride God resists the proud so pride brings divine opposition number two pride brings the motion I've just said that too. If you are all, or God blesses you and promotes you and you are all, the easiest way to come down is to let pride set in. Because then God himself will be responsible for your demotion. Not the devil. So this is not a case of unbinding the devil. We are binding demons. No, not demons. God himself will see to it that you are demoted. Pride brings demotion. Let me read from Proverbs 29 verse 23. Proverbs 29 verse 23. A man's pride brings him low or brings him down. But a man of lowly spirit gains honor. A man's pride brings him low. In other words, pride will bring demotion. If you want to be promoted in life, be humble. But even after you've been promoted, if you want to be demoted, get into become prideful. God will not only resist you, but he will demote you. Not the devil. Not the devil. Not demons. God, can you imagine that? The Bible says that promotion comes not but from the north, south, east, west, but promotion comes from God. Can you imagine the same God who will lift you to be the one who say, you know what? Now I'm bringing you down. Now I'm demoting you. If you doubt it, ask Nebuchadnezzar about it. Nebuchadnezzar was a, at that time he was the most powerful king. There was the US was not born way back then. At the time of the Babylonian Empire, Babylon was like the US of the world. It was a world power. They controlled every nation. All the nations of the earth were colonies of the Babylonian Empire. Everybody submitted to them. They have fought wars, conquered nations, conquered territories, conquered kingdoms. All the kings of the earth were under him. He became so prideful and wanted even worship. You remember the story with Daniel and all those people? But the thing is that God was not trying to get his attention. That, hey, you are becoming proudful and I'm about to demote you if you don't repent. And God gave him a dream. 
And he couldn't recognize, or he couldn't interpret the dream. He's man of wisdom, and magicians could not interpret it. Somehow they fetch Daniel. And he was giving interpretation. And even with that, it didn't get to his head. So on this day, he was standing on the balcony of his, of his kingdom, of his um, duplex or pa palace. And he was thinking about the dream and his interpretation. And he said to himself, who is this God threatening to demote me? Does he know who is? Does he know who I am? Is this not Babylon that I have built with my great power, with my military might? Who is this? God threatening me. And while he was still talking, the voice came from heaven. God said to him, yeah, I'm talking to you. I told you I'm going to demote you. Now I'm paraphrasing it. I told you I'm going to demote you. Now it's going to happen. And that was how right then, God took away his mind. He, he lost his mind. He didn't just become mad. Not that he became mad. God gave him the mind of an animal. He left his throne ran naked out of his house. If he ran naked and ran to the street, he would have said he became mad. No. Now, he became an animal. He ran into the bushes. And he became an animal for seven years. Or seven and a half years. All his nails grew like the nails of the animals. His bears and everything grew like he was now crawling like, you know, the lion eating the grass, rain beating him for seven years. <laughs> oh Lord, don't mess with God. Especially when it comes to pride. Don't mess with God. And a king, the most powerful king, became an animal in the bushes for seven years. Why? Because of the sin of pride. And God allowed seven years to pass. After seven years, out of the blues, just like that, God just restored his mind. He just woke up and discovered, uh oh, yeah. And he, he, he knew what happened. He knew that he had been an animal of this world. And he knew now that God has restored his mind. And I'm sure he, uh, God did it in such a way that nobody took his throne. There was no military coup. There was no overthrow of his government. He, the place remained vacant. Whoever was there was acting. And when he came back and they found him and they brought him back and he was restored, he now gave credit to God. He said, for now I now know there is only one God in heaven that must be worshipped. I dare not mess with God. I've come to tell somebody, don't mess with God because God is not your mate. When he said that God they resist the proud. It doesn't matter who they are. If you are, if you become prideful, God will resist you. God will demote you. So God demoted King Nebuchadnezzar. Pride brings demotion. If you want demotion in life, just be proudful. But if you want promotion in life, be humble. Because then God himself will see to it that you are promoted. Amen. Amen. Number three, pride brings destruction. Not only will you be de demoted or resisted by God, but now you will be destroyed. Pride brings destruction. Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction. And a huge spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. Every time the devil wants to destroy anyone, the first thing he wants to do is to make them proudful. When you are proudful, you don't know, you have no idea, you are on the path of destruction. The devil begins to set people up for destruction by pride. The moment pride is injected, the moment people begin to walk in pride, get ready because destruction is already on the next chapter. There is the next chapter that is coming. 
there is destruction. In Southeast Nigeria, there is the evil tribe. They have a, 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 a saying, a profile. They say that when the gods want to kill somebody, they first block his ears so that he can't even hear. You are trying to talk to him. There's danger. You are trying to say, advise him. Hey, there's danger there. Don't go there. They don't want to hear. They don't want to listen until they walk into there. Why would somebody not listen when there is danger and you are trying to warn them of danger? Pride. Because they'll be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> who do you, do you know who you're talking to? I know what I'm doing. I know myself. <laughs> one, one of our grandmas, she is late now. In those days, she would get drunk. When she gets drunk and you're trying to get her attention or talk to her, she will say, well, I know myself. And the funny thing is that whenever she said, I know myself, that tells you she's drunk. She doesn't know herself. <laughs> so that is to tell you that sometimes people think they know themselves, they know what they are doing, but they don't. Proud, pride will make you to be destroyed because it goes beyond before destruction. Pride is the chapter that, le that, that leads to the chapter before destruction is proud. So if you want to be preserved, if you don't want to be destroyed, if you want to live and be preserved in life, in ministry, in business, in your family, whatever you do, remain humble. Because the moment you tread on the chapter, the moment you walk into or you open the chapter of pride, guess what? The next chapter that is waiting for you is destruction. How many people have been destroyed in life, in career because of pride? May God deliver you, deliver us from the spirit of pride. Lift your hand and say, Father, deliver me from the sin of pride. Deliver me from the spirit of pride. I receive the spirit of humility. I shall be humble. I humble myself before you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Number four. Is it four or five now? Number four. Pride brings disgrace. Not only will it bring destruction, not only will it bring resistance or um, God resisting you, but it will bring disgrace as well. A prideful person is setting himself up to be disgraced. And God will see to it that the person gets some disgrace. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2. Proverbs 11 verse 2. 11, 2. When pride comes, then cometh disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. When pride comes, then cometh disgrace. Now, the way Jesus put, put this scripture when he was giving parables, of course he was teaching about humility. And he says, you know, when you go to a party, to a banquet, to a wedding, or a birthday, or any event they invite you, go and sit at the back. Even though you are the VIP, even though you are one of the most important people to invite her, go sit at the back. He says it's better for the host to say, hey, where is, uh, where is uh, Mr. A or Miss B? And I say, it's back there. I say, oh, oh, come over. We have a seat for you. Come and sit. And they bring you up and give you the front seat. Jesus says that is more honorable than for you to walk in with pride and you think you are the most important person in the house and you walk straight up to the chair, uh, to the head table and you go sit, take the most important seat. And then the ushers come and say, hey sir, excuse me sir, this is reserved for, I'm so sorry, so can you please sit over there? <laughs> Jesus says, it's more, it's better that you sit at the back and they bring you up than you sit up there and they ask you to leave. And that was the teaching he was giving about humility. And then he says, For he that humbles himself shall be elevated, shall be promoted. But everyone that exalts himself shall be humbled. If you want not to be disgraced in life, if you want not to be embarrassed in life, and this is not the devil embarrassing you, this is that God himself will see to it that you are disgraced and embarrassed. If you want that not to happen, stay humble. Be humble and stay humble. But if you want to experience or suffer some serious embarrassment, then go ahead and be proud. And God will see to it that you are disgraced because he says, 
that when the when pride comes, then come in disgrace, which means that pride will bring disgrace. May you not suffer disgrace. May you not suffer reproach. May you not suffer any form of, uh, of humiliation because of pride. May God give you, give us the spirit of humility that we will be humble before him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, number five, pride brings disagreement. Pride will often bring a result in disagreement. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Sorry, Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verse 10. Pride only brings quarrels, in bracket, disagreement. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Do you know that many times when people have disagreement or quarrels, the root of it is pride. Sometimes it's not every time that you need to talk and talk back and fight and sometimes you just need to keep quiet. Sometimes you just need to let some things go. That is wisdom. That is humility. But when you always want to claim that you have all the answers, you are right, and you want to claim that, you know what, I'm, I'm the big shot, then there will always be quarrels and disagreement and the root of it traces to pride. A humble person will often not have an issue to just let some things go and not make a case, a big deal out of everything. In relationships, you see that many times when quarrels happen, when disagreement, when fighting, even when violence, and even when killings, people get to killing each other, including in marriage, including in relationships of any kind. When you trace it, you see quarrels, you see disagreement. And when you trace that, the root of it is always pride. Because if somebody was humble, maybe one of the parents was humble, you will see that you, they will just have let something fly. Just let it go. Just let it. It's not everything that is worth fighting over. Let me say it again. It's not everything that is worth fighting over. It's not everything that is worth quarreling about. It's not everything that is worth the disagreement. Some things you just need to let it slide. Just maybe just be quiet. Just don't respond. Don't reply. Just be quiet. Let it, let it just die a natural death. But when pride is involved, pride is involved, you will see that everything that comes by, every fly that flies by, you want to fight it, you want to respond, you want to, you want to be the right one, you want to you know, quarrel, you want disagreement, and that feeds on pride. So I pray this morning that God will deliver us from the sin of pride. I pray that in our relationship with God and work with God, we will not be found guilty of pride. Come on, stand on your feet and talk to God from your heart. And tell him, Father, I repent from the sin of pride. Every sin, every way I have sinned against you, every sin of pride in my heart, forgive me, Lord. Come on, talk to him, Father, forgive me for every sin of pride from my heart, the pride of my heart, the proud the pride in the things I've said, in the things I've acted in my life, every way I have dishonored you by being proud for Father, forgive me. I repent to God. Have mercy on me. Come on, talk to him from your heart. And if you're not praying, that's a sign of pride too. You are trying to say to God, you know, God, I'm fine. I don't need any help. I've not seen. I'm not pride. I'm, I'm okay. That itself is proud. You need to be humble and acknowledge that you have missed it, that you have fallen short of his glory, that you have not always been right that you have sinned against God. Acknowledging so is part of humility. Not acknowledging that you have sinned and, and made mistake and need God's grace. That is said is pride in your heart. Have mercy on us, Lord. Father, forgive us. We pray this moment as we receive this word. Deliver us from the sin of proud of pride. May we not be seen to be guilty of pride, oh God. Deliver us from every sin of pride. In every way we have acted in pride and anywhere we have resolved and walked in pride before you, forgive us, oh God. We repent before you, forgive us. And we receive the spirit of humility now. Come on. Begin to receive the humility. Tell you, Father, I receive the spirit of humility. Help me to be humble. Help me to remain humble. Father, we receive the spirit of humility. Help us to be humble. May we be humble before you. May we walk in humility before you. I receive humility the spirit of humility. 
shall receive the spirit of humility. We will not be proud of God. Ah, uh, deliver us from pride. Deliver us from the strategy of the enemy to make us proudful. We ask this moment to God, may we walk in humility. May we not be guilty of the sin of pride. May we walk in humility. We receive the spirit of humility. Your word says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. May you lift us up. I pray for your people now that your lifting grace will rest upon us as we walk in humility and not in pride. I pray your blessing upon your people. And if there is anyone under the spirit of pride, I pray the spirit of pride in their lives. I set your people free from every spirit of pride. Be glorified in our lives. We thank you. Come on, thank him now. If you've been blessed by this work, thank him. Thank him now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your word. We are going to walk in humility. Lord, we promise you, we make a commitment today. We will walk in humility. We will not walk in proud. We will not walk in pride. We are not going to be prideful. We will walk in humility. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the rest of this month of October. I speak your blessings over your people. Everyone watching, everyone who is here, and those who will be watching, I declare, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. The rest of this month produces blessings, produces favor, produces abundance. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, O God. We worship you. I declare in Jesus' name, new doors are open unto us. New favor comes our way. Blessings comes our way. Be glorified in our lives. We thank you. Let your peace go with us. Let your blessings go with us. As we humble ourselves, lift your people up. Let your lifting grace rest upon your people. Lift somebody by your hand, oh God, as they humble themselves and as we submit unto you. Let there be testimonies this week. The rest of the month of October, let there be testimonies. Glorify your name in our lives. And we thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says amen. amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. If you are watching, give the Lord a clap. Clap for Jesus wherever you are. Praise him, praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, something good has happened and is happening. And God is going to lift you as you remain humble before him. God is going to see to it that you are lifted. Even when people plan and put their heads together to bring you down, to pull you down, God is going to make them fall into their pits and he's going to see to it that you rise. The, the grace to be lifted is upon you as you remain humble and as you walk in humility. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give him praise one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to thank God for the service today. Everyone that has been a part of the service, I want to we want to thank God for you. Can you